Greetings wonderful people and our vodcast for this week is titled Finding 30 Minutes in Your Doctoral Day. Now there are a lot of challenges I think that are confronting international doctoral education at the moment but one of the most insidious I think is based on a false assumption. And that assumption is that a doctoral candidate is under the age of 25, enrolled full-time, on scholarship, and in the hard end of the laboratory-based sciences. Now that's actually an incredibly small group, but the assumption that that is the majority of our students causes some problems for our processes, procedures and supervisory behaviours. And even for the guys and girls who are out there right now in that group, in full-time doctoral education, guys, that can change. You can get a job, there can be a family issue and all of a sudden, you're a part-time doctoral candidate. So today I wanted to offer some quick and dirty tips for our part-time doctoral candidates, a big hello to all of you guys, and also to our full-time doctoral candidates who just want to suck a little bit more energy, a little bit more of intensity out of their doctoral day. And I would like to do an enormous shout out to the hundreds, yes, hundreds of students who have contacted me via email, via Twitter, via Facebook, via LinkedIn, who have walked into my office to say a big hello. So some shout outs for this week. Big hello to Sarah, who I met in the induction last week. Hello, wonderful Sarah. Uh, big love to Catherine in Lincoln. Catherine spent some lovely time with me last Friday afternoon on the phone. Catherine, so proud of you. So proud of your achievements. Ah, Murray in Dunedin. Murray, so great to get your emails, mate. Kia to you, bro. And the bloke that's become really, really famous in the office, Bruce, I've probably spent more time uh, with Bruce via email than I have with my own husband in the last week. Bruce is a legend. He is becoming my constant companion and correspondence. And Bruce has given me, I think, perhaps 157 ideas for future vodcasts. So, Bruce, mate, I adore you, and I'll be working through those ideas for the next couple of years or so. But today the task is pretty clear and clean, guys. What I want to do for you is I want to help you create 30 crisp, powerful minutes in your doctoral day of intensity. And those minutes really for me in this week will be in the morning. But I know there are night people out there. Hello, Sarah. There are night people out there. Some of these strategies can be transposed directly to an evening strategy as well. So let's create 30 productive minutes and here's some strategies for you and I hope they are useful. Now some of you may know this is not only an area that I'm interested in in terms of research, I'm also terribly interested in this area in terms of my own personal life experience. As some of you may know, I was that young person, I know it's hard to believe now darlings, but I was that young person enrolled in a full-time PhD on scholarship. I was that person. But one year into that scholarship and into that candidature, I got a full-time academic job. Only for one year, but I got a full-time academic job. And this was in the mid-1990s, yeah? which has a lot of similarities with right now, the mid-2010s, in that jobs are pretty hard to get. So if I'd said no to that job, I'm not sure another opportunity would have emerged. So I said yes, and I bundled all my PhD notes up into an enormous box and sent it to myself in Wellington. So that was important. And suddenly I'd moved from being a full-time PhD student on scholarship to a part-time PhD student with a full-time job. And it was a bit more serious than that because I had to do a magnificent job as a first year teacher at uh, the Victoria University in Wellington. I had to be amazing. I had to be the best teacher that anybody had ever seen. So I couldn't take half measures in terms of the job because if I wasn't magnificent, I wouldn't get the next job in a year's time. And I also knew very well that unless I finished the PhD, nobody was going to hire somebody with a half-finished doctorate either. So you can see the problem, the issue I was in. Now, I've always been an early riser. My entire family get up very early. We've always got up about 4 a.m. or so. Most of my family still do that. But I made a decision 
when I was working at the Vic and realising what was I was going to have to do in this year, that I was going to start getting up at 3am and I was going to work from 3 to 5am purely on the PhD and then after 5 I would do the work and stuff that was required for my academic post at the Vic. And I did that strategy and after 10 months I finished my PhD, I bound it, I bundled it up in an enormous box and send it, sent it from Wellington right the way through to Murdoch University in Western Australia and it was passed without correction. Yeah. Uh, now, if I hadn't instigated those tactics, then I wouldn't have got that doctorate finished. And by the way, I went on to a three-year uh, academic post after that and then tenure. So the strategy worked. Now, I still use a lot of those tactics that I trialled at the Vic in Wellington 20 years later. You see, guys, my last three jobs in universities have been really intense leadership jobs, the jobs that bleed into your life, take over your weekends. I've been doing budgets, you know, 10 million bucks, plus, 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 multiple currencies, multiple staff, multiple campuses, multiple time zones, really intense stuff. And when I started to enter these leadership posts in universities, as many of you will in 10, 15 and 20 years, I had a decision to make. What sort of academic leader was I going to be? Yeah, Was I going to be just sort of an academic manager, so like, you know, like a bank manager, but like with a university, so research inactive, not teaching, not supervising, but just sort of managing stuff? Or was I going to be a bit better than that? Was I going to be an academic leader? a compound noun rather than an adjective and a noun. So was I going to be intensely research active, knowing that in the jobs that I was in, not one minute of a working day, not one dollar could be spent on my personal research. So I had to find strategies around a very long working day to remain research active. So five years ago, I started to get up at 2 a.m. And so what I now do is I read and I write from 2 to 5 a.m. in the morning and then I go and work in the gym for two hours and then I start my working day. So since about 2012 when I entered these leadership posts, I've published seven books, 16 book chapters and 37 refereed articles while also continuing my journalism career. So clearly the strategy has worked. Now not one of those publications has been produced or touched during a conventional working day. So I've had to do it at the start of my day. So as you can see I didn't give up and guys it's been tough but what I'm going to do for you right now is I'm going to give you some strategies, some quick and dirty tips to give you 30 minutes into your working day so that you don't have to get up at 2am like ever. So often I hear our doctoral candidates, and I heard a lot of guys and gals in my office this week using this phrase saying, I've got problems with time management. No one has problems with time management, but a lot of people have problems with goal management. And goal management is really, really easy to instigate. So basically what one does with goal management is name a goal. What goal do you want to achieve? Write that into a sentence with as much precision as you can, and then break it down into very little steps that are often linear. That's all you do. That's goal management, and one of those little tiny goals becomes the task of every day, of the 30 minutes that we're talking about today. So yes, self-discipline is important, but guys, self-discipline is contextual. You can figure a context in which self-discipline is really easy to activate. So let's get the groundwork in place here. If you have a partner, if you have family responsibilities, so you've got a beloved, you've got kids, what I'd advise is maybe show them this video or talk through what I'm talking through now and commence this conversation about how they can help you do your PhD. Because as I've always said, an individual doesn't do a PhD, an entire family does a PhD. So. How are we going to find this 30 minutes? Yes, something is going to have to be removed from your life. You can't just simply add a PhD into an already filled life. Something will have to be removed. But with the tactics that I'm about to give you right now, 
that something is probably going to be quite banal and you shouldn't even really be doing it anyway. But it will also require your partner and or your kids to give you privacy for just 30 minutes a day. So for example, what I do, what I recommend my part-timers do, hi Anne, hi Mark, is put a note on their door and say PhD 30 minutes. So that's on the door so the kids, the partner knows you'll be there shortly and they can count you down if you like, but the 30 minutes is on. You do also have to be motivated. Look, it's very easy, it's very pleasant in a winter, even an Australian winter, to stay in bed or drink nice coffee, scroll through Facebook, read a magazine. That's all very pleasant. So I understand why you would like to stay in bed. But if you want a doctorate, you've got to earn that doctorate. A PhD is not easy. That's why most people can't get one. And that's why to this day, having a doctorate is still special. It still matters. It still means something. So the key first concept I'm going to introduce to you today is called habit stacking. Habit stacking. SJ Scott produced a really good guide to habit stacking. It's how to, it's not highly academic, but it's a great how to guide. So SJ Scott. And I'm pretty efficient, but when I applied the ideas from that book, I saved myself 30 minutes a day. The key principle, guys, is as follows. Log what you do in the morning. So log the schedule, the stuff, the behaviours, the patterns that you go through in the morning. And this is often really simple stuff like having a shower, dressing in the morning, taking vitamins, drinking a cup of coffee, that sort of stuff. And what you do is you log what you do, but then you put them in a pattern. You put them in a stack. And the reason you put them in a stack is so that you simply go through the stack almost automatically each morning. So there's no thought involved. You wake up, you go through the routine. And the key at the start, guys, don't add too much to the stack. Just get it going at the start and then every couple of weeks add some more stuff. So why we're doing all of this and why it's so important for you as a PhD student is I want you to wake up in the morning and launch into your habit stack. So do the habit stack so that as quickly as possible you are sitting down at your desk and doing 30 intense minutes of writing. So for example my habit stack is, and I'll, I'll actually think it through as I'm doing it to camera, so I wake up, jump out of bed, I put the kettle on, I put my laptop up so that it starts to warm up, I throw myself in the shower, I throw myself out of the shower, I put on my hair, <laughs> I put on my face, I put on my exercise gear, make myself a cup of coffee, take my vitamins, sit down, start writing. So from the moment I am out of bed through to the moment I am sitting there writing, it takes 20 minutes maximum. Now that's not a long time for a woman. There are men out there, I've seen more men with beards at Flinders than any place I've ever seen anywhere in the world. So if a woman can do the whole box and dice in 20 minutes, our bearded Flinders PhD students, my goodness me, two minutes in out, shake it all about. So think about your habit stack and think about how you can pinch five minutes or 20 minutes from your conventional day. So that's the habit stack. Now let's get to the important stuff. What do you need to do around your PhD 30 intensive minutes to make it work? So a few things. The most important tip I give everybody, and all the research confirms this, is each night, just before you go to bed, take two minutes two minutes and construct the goal for the next morning. Make it small, make it tight, make it precise. The night before, think, write down what you are going to do the following morning. So for example, it could be a word length, so you could write 200 words of a literature review, that's a small goal. You could write the complex paragraph that links two theories. So what is the link between Homi Baba's third space and Edward Syed's otherness? What is that link? Spend 30 minutes, get that together. You could work through a problem that you're having with a method, or say you've just received a very odd result from your experiment. Spend 30 minutes teasing out 
why that has happened. So be as clear as you can in your outcome. Make it by words, make it by just getting an idea to stick together. Then what I'd ask you to do is set up your computer. This is so important, this changed my life. Set up your computer so you only have to lift the lid up and start immediately. You're not searching through files, you're not pulling something up, you're not doing save as, you lift up the lid and that's the point of the paragraph that you start. Now these two tips alone have saved me half an hour out of my life every single day. And the biggest tip I can offer you, and this is crucial, none of this will work unless you do this, and that involves social media. Do not connect with the internet in any form during these 30 minutes. Don't check your email, don't click your notifications, don't go on Facebook, don't go on LinkedIn, don't go on Twitter. Don't check anything. Digital darkness the best you can. Remember guys, those notifications will be waiting for you in 30 minutes. You don't need to engage them now. Waking up 30 minutes early and getting that 30 minutes into your doctorate is much more important than anybody liking a Facebook post and retweeting a tweet on Twitter. I love social media, but nothing is more important than the writing time. A few years ago, two, three years ago, I wrote a book called Digital Dieting. So I would really love you for that 30 minutes to enact some digital dieting. And guys, if you're going to check social media, find a spot during the day where you can multitask it a bit. So for example, when I go to the gym, I work for a very intensive hour on the elliptical. I breathe like a bull mastiff. It's really not very attractive. <laughs> But then I proceed to get on the treadmill just to slowly bring myself down a little bit so I can put makeup on to start my day. And in the second half of that treadmill hour, that's when I start checking social media. Yep. So that's habit stacking too. It's also the only multitasking I do in a day. Now this will be the hardest habit to break at the start, guys. Many of us have got used to simply waking up in the morning and there is our phone and we check it, right? Now that is a seriously bad habit. The first thing I would do is I would take your mobile phone out of your bedroom. Use an actual alarm clock, don't use your mobile phone. Put the phone in the bag for the morning and handle it later. Let this morning that we're talking about now to preserve those 30 minutes, let that happen without the phone. And as you can pick up, the preparation the night before really matters here, guys. I get everything organized the night before. I pack my bags, I pack my clothes, I get all my paperwork done. Everything is ready to go so I can do my writing and then grab my bags and head to the gym. So organization matters here. So all of this is about cutting out any possibility of delay or distraction. That's all we're doing. Delay, distraction, gone. I'm saving you a fair number of minutes here that might actually mean you don't have to get up any earlier. So let's review the night before. Plan the small achievable goal for the next morning. Sleep. Remove all phones from bedrooms. Turn the sound off. Whack it in your bag. Wake up early. Drink water. Drink vitamins. Put on coffee. Yeah. Have your shower. Come out of your shower. Get dressed. Sit down right for 30 minutes, get up, have breakfast, exercise, go to work, get on with the rest of your life. So the key guys is to start. So why not have that conversation with your partner, with your kids, with your mates now, today? Tell them what you'd like to do, get your vibe, get your environment in place, select the task that you would like to write and then get up tomorrow morning and give me 30 minutes. Remember, no one is perfect, no one is, but you can give yourself and you can give your doctorate 30 minutes. Then you're free to get on with the rest of your life and we'll come up with all sorts of different strategies to help bits and pieces. Don't try and create the perfect PhD candidature. Just give me a perfect 30 minutes. And guys, time <laughs> The old lady speaketh. Time is so precious, guys. We only have, I think, 1,440 minutes every single day. And no matter how many cups of coffee or how many Red Bulls you have, you've only got 1,440 minutes 
in every day. Don't chew through those minutes with emails and Facebook and stuff that, to be frank, really doesn't matter too much. Use this productive 30 minutes for your PhD. The emails will still be waiting for you. So what I'm asking you to do for me is start to live a proactive rather than a reactive life. And that starts by claiming that first 30 minutes. So let me know how you go. Keep sending me those messages. I love hearing from you. If you're going to try all this, have a go and let me know what's happening. If things are going wrong, we'll talk about it. And I will see you next week. Love, light and peace to every single one of you. Tea out. Rock and roll. Have a good one.